Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, today, for those of you that either have a battery that's, that's getting old and not working quite so well, or if you have accessories like uh, bigger car stereos, uh, lighting systems, winches, all those different types of accessories that take a lot of power, uh, I want to show you how we can take uh, the factory battery out of there and put the biggest battery that we possibly can in that tray. Um, and also show you how we can hook a power supply up to it and keep the, the basically the computers alive while we're taking out the battery so you don't have to go back in there and reset your clocks or any other electronics uh, that may get reset by not having power. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we pull the battery out we should probably think about a couple of things here. Um, if all you have is a stock radio in the vehicle and all you need to do is reprogram the clock on it, you may not care if, if you lose power to the computer. But if you have other electronics, say like some stereo equipment, digital signal processors, anything like that that you may have to go in there and reprogram, uh, which takes some time, you may want to do this method that I'm going to show here just to save yourself some headache. So what we're going to do before we remove the battery or undo the terminals is we're going to get a power supply of somewhere between 12 to 13 and a half volts, somewhere in that range. Uh, I have this NOCO uh, Genius charger right here. The nice thing about this uh, G7200 is that it has a mode on it that you can go to the supply voltage right here. And this is 13.6 uh, volts and a max of five amps that it can put out. So by putting it to this mode, not the charge mode, just the supply mode, it's acting kind of like a separate battery. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to connect to the positive side of my battery, somewhere away from where I'm gonna be working on the terminals, if possible. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the negative and clip it right to the alternator, somewhere where it's nice and clean on the alternator. It, the reason I'm not clipping it onto the negative of the battery here is because I'm gonna be trying to get this terminal off. And I don't wanna bump the connections there. <clears throat> so by clipping it to the alternator, it gets it away uh, so I don't have to worry about bumping that. Another thing you want to think about is if you start working on the positive side first um, and you touch from the positive to the frame of the vehicle, you're creating a short circuit, which can be dangerous. Uh, more so dangerous because it creates a big spark and it's almost like welding. And uh, it's a little bit hard on the battery too and your, your ratchet or your wrench. So um, you want to be very careful about not touching the frame of the vehicle with your ratchet. And just in general, be careful working around the battery. I can sure go ahead and touch the positive and negative on the battery, and it's a low enough voltage that it's not a problem. Uh, but again, a piece of metal touched to the frame is not gonna be a, a very safe situation. So what you're gonna need for this is a 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet, preferably like a small quarter inch ratchet. Um, a screwdriver with a 10 millimeter on the end would be a good idea. And then something to pry with, maybe a flat screwdriver or something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the terminals. Here's where having a little pry bar comes in. So I can go in here and I can just pry it open just a little bit to loosen it. And again, make sure you don't touch to the frame. Once we have those loosened up, I can go ahead. Remember, I have my power supply on this, uh, basically feeding the computer power. So now when I disconnect my battery carefully, push this off to the side as far as I can, and the negative. Kind of just gotta do a little bit of wiggle on there. Get those out of the way. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take my uh, screwdriver with my 10 millimeter, and there's a little hold down clamp inside here. So it's kind of on the back side of the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that up. So you can see it's a little uh, clamp that kind of wedges in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take those out for now. We'll need those again. They should be free, they are heavy. So make sure you don't drop it on your fender or your fingers. Pull here, I'm just gonna kind of wiggle, pull straight up. It's heavy, so if you can get someone to help you out, it might be a good idea.
batteries out of there. Just want to show you the tray. Um, so the group seven size battery bumps right up against here. Uh, to put that group eight size in here, it will fit. It'll actually bump right up against the wall of this plastic right here. But you need to remove this little spacer right here. So if I squeeze on it, just pushing forward on it, this will lift out of there. You can see the little tab right there. And just to show you how I connected to keep the memory alive, you can see that I took my positive from my supply and, and this routes back to here. You could clip it on any of these here. Um, but I just wanna make sure that I don't bump that to lose power. So there's my positive, and you can see connected over on the alternator where it's nice and clean is my negative. Now that we have the old battery out of the vehicle, let's go ahead and compare the two. So this Mopar battery right here uh, has been in there for six years. So if I measure across, let's just get a size on it. So it's about 12 and a quarter inches long. It is about seven inches deep and about seven and a half inches tall. And this battery is considered an H size group and it's got 750 cold cranking amps. So that means at 32 degrees, it can put out 750 amps max. And it's got a reserve capacity of 140, uh, which means that you can pull 25 amps off of it for 140 minutes till it is dead. So let's take a look at the new battery. Run your tape measure across the positive and negative, that might be bad. So this is about 14 inches long and the dimensions um, are the same in height and in depth. Uh, but if we take a look, this is an AGM battery, which stands for absorbed glass mat. And this is made by FVP. I picked this up at uh, uh, Menards, a uh, pretty reasonable price, it was $180. Um, and they had the 11% off on it. So uh, it comes out to be a fairly fairly inexpensive battery to, compared to some of the other brands of the same size. So you can see that it's, it's a little bit larger in its length, but everything else is pretty much the same. And you also need to look to see where the terminals are at. Uh, in this case, the positive's here, same as on the original battery, and the negative's over here. So it's important to get the terminals in the correct location for your fitment. So the idea here is this battery has uh, 850 cold cranking amps and 160 reserve capacity. Whereas if we look at the old one, you can see there, 750 and 140. And this is considered a group eight, okay? A group eight or a 49 um, AGMG uh, sizing. So, but this will fit in your Ram pickup. Uh, this is a 2014. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at how it's gonna fit in there. So this is the point where it'd be good to have a friend to help you move things around, because these are gonna get in the way, but we'll see what we can do here. And there's quite a bit of weight. I think this battery weighs like 55 pounds. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully battery but you can see it fits in there pretty nice so before I hook up the batteries what I like to do is clean the terminals uh, so what I do is take some type of a wire brush I like to clean the inside of the connectors because any corrosion in there is going to cause resistance and make your brand new battery not seem as powerful as what it should be so taking the time to clean all this up uh, is gonna be well worth it down the road. Even though it's a brand new battery, just to go around and clean it up a little bit. So take your time, get everything nice and clean. Another nice thing about these AGM batteries is they don't uh, gas. And so, because they don't gas, they don't corrode up your terminals like traditional lead acid batteries do. Uh, so that's gonna be another benefit of this battery too. I don't have any, or much corrosion I would say on these terminals, but it'd be nice just to, to kind of guarantee that that won't happen. I'm gonna go ahead and get the terminals on, just kind of wiggle them. Make sure 
all the wires are not being pinched. Now the positive. Okay. Nice. Just gonna work on this negative a little bit more. All right, so this negative terminal has been giving me a little bit of a problem. So what I'm gonna do is just take a flat screwdriver or something and just pry the terminal open just a little bit. I'll wiggle that down. You wanna take the time to make sure that you have a good connection on your battery. You can see I got it down below the top of there and this is nicely seated too. So again, just take the time to get everything nice and lined up. Go ahead and tighten it up. And these are pretty soft metal, so you don't wanna crank these down too hard. There is probably a torque spec for this. But I just go until I can't wiggle the terminal. Make everything all nice and pretty and lined up like you meant to do it. point I have the positive I have the negative hooked up uh, we are getting power now off of the battery so now I can go ahead and disconnect my power supply okay disconnect that shut your charger off See if we can get our foot back in there or a little wedge Okay, get the thread started with your finger so you don't cross thread it. And this just needs to be tightened up with just a regular like screwdriver or a small ratchet. None of this has to be overly tight. Make sure you don't lose your tools. Just make sure everything's lined up. It's looking good. Okay. And if you wanted to add a little more protection, you can get some battery terminal spray. It's kind of, usually it's kind of a reddish in color, kind of pinkish in color. You can go ahead and spray that on your terminals. It just coats them, just keeps oxidation and acid and things like that uh, from contaminating or, or corroding them. You don't have to do that, but if you just want an extra layer of protection, especially if you're using a traditional lead acid style battery, that might be a good idea to do that with. So I just wanna go ahead and show you the fitment in here. So if yours is factory, you're probably not gonna have this. This runs my winch for the vehicle. And then I have some power cables for amplifiers and things like that. Uh, but there you can see the, the foot down in there or the wedge that's holding the battery in nicely in place. Uh, you can see it came clear over to the edge right here. There's still a little bit of space. And you can see this group size eight battery does fit in this Ram pickup. So. I think that's gonna be a, a new addition to the power supply. So maybe I'll do a future video, just letting you know uh, what I think of the battery and, and how it's performing. But I think it should be good. Another thing you might wanna do if they haven't already stamped it at the store is go ahead and take something like a permanent marker or a paint pen and write the date when you installed it. Uh, what I also do too is I have a tester. Um, I don't have it with me right now, I'll have to go grab it. Uh, but I, I go ahead and test the battery when it's brand new and I write those specs on it just so I have a good idea as the battery ages uh, how it's performing compared to new. And you can pick those little testers up. Uh, I'll leave a link in, in the description. Uh, you can pick those up off Amazon and parts stores and things like that. Uh, but they basically just pull some power off the battery and they give you an idea of the health of the battery. Uh, giving you cranking amps, cold cranking amps and uh, maybe reserve c capacity, but more so it's your it's your cold cranking apps that you're 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 concerned about. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. Look at an angle from here. Oh, so that looks good. So here's another little tidbit that I kind of left out, but might be useful to you too. Uh, even though you purchase a brand new battery to put in your vehicle, 
uh, it's always a good idea before you put it in the vehicle is to take your handy dandy charger out and charge it till it is fully charged before you put it in the vehicle. That'll just start you off with a fresh battery that's got a good charge on it, uh, ready to go in your vehicle. Um, you may luck out and the battery is already in a good state of charge, but maybe that battery has sat on the shelf for a long period of time and lead acid batteries do lose their charge as they sit. So um, I always charge my batteries up before I put them in the vehicles just to assure that I have, you know, good power. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, till next time, talk to you later.